Hey guys, welcome back to Backseat Driver. He's John, I'm Julian, and today we're going to talk about options you should have when you buy a car. What is one of the options that you will not take? You will Sun not. Sunroof! I think oh. that's the biggest, <laughs> biggest uh, con job in, in the history of automotive sales in Singapore. I think a lot of people think that sunroofs are, oh, the, the bee's knees when you, when you buy a car, you know, some, some options can cost you up to three to five thousand dollars just for the sunroof and as someone who has a sunroof that i didn't choose to have it's useless in the day when you open it it makes your car a greenhouse without it i drive at around 23 degrees celsius on yep. the aircon the moment i open it up i have to blast the aircon at 18 degrees because it's very very warm i would think that it's useful because hot air rises so if you're parked under the sun for a really long time you go in and then like you know you can just like wind down the window and like open up the sunroof and then when you drive the air you, you, your car sort of cools down very quickly when you open it up the sunlight is coming in and i guess burning up the leather yes, I, I, I feel I that it is it is not worth hmm. the money yeah because but I, I have a tiktok on our TikTok account, which is very viral about how to cool your car down. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yes, yes. How about Fair you? Enough. What is the one the thing? The one thing that I will not have yeah. is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Huh? Yeah, I, I, I won't have that. I know it's crazy. I have never... I Okay, for the sake of testing when I review cars, I do connect Android Auto. I'm using Android phone, by the way. Um, but I hate it because, number one, it's very distracting. Whenever somebody texts or... WhatsApp or calls, it just appears on the screen, the name, the message, everything. I don't really bother going to the settings to redo yeah. everything because it's my phone. It's a temporary card anyway, right? So all my messages can be read. So that's privacy issue, just one. And second thing is very distracting because when I'm driving and someone texts me, I tend to just look oh, okay. and then I just get distracted. Um, but I think it helps a lot if you do use Google Maps all the time, which yes. I do have to because yeah. I, I, I'm horrible at directions. Um, that definitely helps, but I think just having Bluetooth for me is good enough. I'm very happy with that. I, I don't need Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Okay, for me, I started off just using my phone, but the mm. moment I changed to a head unit that had Apple CarPlay, it's a game changer. The screen is way bigger. Right, uh, right. The receiving messages, at least for Apple, there's a driving mode. That means when you're on driving mode, None of the messages and pop-ups uh, will appear. Well, maybe Android has it, but I just didn't bother, like... Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah, so I... That's something that I'm not, like... Okay. I, I, I for for me, it's an option that I would think is necessary for all new cars going forward. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough, fair it's enough. I, I think that's... convenient. Yeah, I think that's... I think a lot of people would agree with you. Like, I, I think only a handful, or maybe no one would agree with me. I think it's just me. Just not one thing, like... Ugh. I yeah. think you're an old school car guy. Pro probably, probably. Okay, so what's the one thing, or rather the first thing, first option that you must have in a car? Proper adaptive cruise control. It could be radar or camera based, but it must okay. be the cruise control that allows the car to stop and then auto move off. Right, right, None right. None of right, those right, cruise right. controls that switches off the moment you go below 30 kilometers per hour. Yeah. That is as good as... No, no adaptive at all. Yeah, no adaptive. And there were a few test cars that I've driven that had the, the thing that start and stop. Oh, it, it made going home a lot easier. So much easier. And I can just keep my foot on the brake pedal and it's it's not ah, very it's not very okay. tiring. Yeah. And okay. Okay. yeah, didn't need to think that much. I, I can it's imagine a very relaxing that. drive. I can I love imagine. it. Uh, because I, I just feel that having this cruise car, I, I I seldom use cruise control even when the car comes with i because i feel like it's not it's less relevant in singapore than other countries you know like ah. up north or like in europe countries european countries where you can drive from state to state having cruise control would just definitely help a lot yeah but in singapore because there's a lot of start stop short distance um it's not really necessary um so i don't really yeah maybe because, because our office is in Yunos Ubi and you stay somewhere yeah, yeah. nearby. Whereas yeah, I stay in Bukit Panjang. So yeah, that's true. there's enough road for me to fully yeah. appreciate something like adaptive cruise, cruise that's control. That's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. That's true. Right, so, yeah. so that's what I think is an absolute must option. Okay. If, there, if it's available for the car that you're thinking of buying. Okay, that's fair enough. I think for me, my top option must definitely be ventilated seat. Ventilated seats, of course. Get ventilated seats. The only... Thing here missing that I wish the Audi A6 would have is 
ventilated seats. I would definitely need ventilated seats uh, for my car, whatever car. And this is something that you really should consider because if imagine being parked, your car being parked in an open space and it's just hot. It's just, you go inside the car and you have no sunroof, obviously, and it's just stuffy and it's burning, you know, yeah, it's burning. Yeah. Having ventilator seats just solves that problem. It's effectively just... Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people don't realize that when the car is parked under the hot sun, there are two things that are very hot. The air in the car and your seat. Yep. And the ventilator seat really cools your, your back and yeah, your butt down yeah, really okay. quickly. Uh, but of course, there'll be the sound. Right? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the aircon sound, obviously, the aircon sound. But I'm completely fine. I'm, I'm very happy with the aircon sound so long as I can get myself cooled down. That's cool. <laughs> okay, what's your second one? The option that I won't take. Won't take? Yes. Okay. It's the self-parking thing. The auto-parking. Right, right, right. The one you signal and then it detects a lot and it just automatically goes. Yeah, because yeah. I've tried it on at least three or four cars and it's very hit and miss. So how it works is you see a lot. Then you start signaling and you have to move at a certain speed yeah. towards the lot and beyond the lot. Yes. Then it will detect if that you're trying to park. Then after that, the only automatic thing that it does is it automatically steers for you. You have yeah. to change the gears and then press the accelerator or the brake pedal. Yes. And the car will then try to park. For perpendicular parking, I think out of the five, six times that I've attempted, mm. Yeah, all the five, six times the, the car is in the lot, but it's either, you know, slanted oh. or it's too near one side. So you park in a way that the people parking next to you will just bang your door, cause you dance, and it's just too and much stress. And the curse you as well. Yeah, there's really just too much stress trying to park the car automatically. It's much easier to just park the car manually my experience with that was quite okay especially for parallel parking um but i have to say yeah i think the reverse parking was a bit of an issue because it was always at an angle it was always slanted and it wasn't really your tires will not be parallel to the parking line at all it will always be like slightly slanted i think you just calculate the box as a whole yes they don't yes. really do the you know uh whereas for parallel parking so far i had a positive experience but it took time as in it the car takes time to detect the lot and when you have like four or five other cars behind you, you, you feel quite stressed, really. Yes. Because it takes time to detect the lot. It's not like, a, oh, I see a lot and I'm just hazard light and I'm ready to, ready to go. No, it's, it's it yeah. actually sort of like, you have to move in front, move, then like, mm, I need it to detect. I need, then it starts going. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe the technology just isn't ready yet. Yes, it's Isn't not. fully... Yeah, it'll be a game changer if it's 100% next time. I think yeah. everybody will, will want to take it. But right now, as, as it is, it's... But I can imagine it'll help yeah. a lot of people. Because, I mean, although I can park, I can do my parallel parking relatively smoothly, um, can you imagine how stressful it is? Imagine you go to Club Street and then like there are, when you, you find a perfect lot right outside the place you want to makan, right? And then there are like 500 people staring at you. As you park and just go, oh, I hope he curbs his rims. Yeah. I hope he bangs the car. And people from Urgh. the opposite side of the traffic are like, coming closer and closer. Yeah, right? so you feel like, oh man, you, 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 you feel that stress. So I think if this technology can be, uh, can be perfected, it'll help a lot of people, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. I don't really know if I have a second option that I would really want as much as ventilated seats, but if I had that choice, I'll probably go for a good audio system. Ah, yeah. I'm not an audiophile, uh, so I don't really have the right words to use to describe music and sound, so to speak, but my current car has got a very standard speaker. So just stock, right? la. Yeah, it's super stock. Actually, I don't no even brand, know if it's no like, brand. yeah, it's like brandless. Um, and I love to listen to music loud when I'm driving alone. It just sounds noisy. It doesn't sound like... <laughs> it's not proper. It's like... Wow, it's just noisy. Yeah. It's, it just makes it very trashy. But I, I mean, I can just... It's not distorted or anything. It doesn't feel distorted. Or maybe it is, but I don't know because I, I, I know nothing about sound, right? But is it, it just, hollow? Sounds hollow? It no. doesn't sound hollow. It just sounds noisy. It's not proper. Okay. And you can tell the difference the moment I jump from that to a test car that has got a proper sound system. So different car makers have got different... They work with different uh, sound systems, sound companies, so to speak. So you have Mazda with Bose. Mm. Uh, Bang and Olufsen with uh, Audi. Audi. 
you have Meridian for Jaguar Land Rover, so and so forth. I don't really have a particular one that I like, but I think I'll probably just go for like, I don't know, like a, like a Bose sound system. Yeah, so something yeah. just, you know, really simple. Um, if Bose is considered simple, but... <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, the upgrade just makes sense. Uh. Yes. We are not audiophiles, but yes, I can tell you that the moment we get into a car with a branded sound system, it just sounds better. And it's not because we are affected by the brand. Yeah. You know, you, we do drive the base model and there is a difference. And yeah, I think the first car that made me realize that a sound system is important was the XC60. And I think they had a ha oh. Harman Kardon system. Right, right, right. And it really changed the whole audio experience, you know? Right. I was listening to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, right, and okay. <laughs> then, then is the... You could really hear... One side and one side. And it was so clear. Mm -hmm. it, it felt like they were talking next to me. Okay, wow. And, and that's something I don't get in regular speakers. Yeah. So, yes, it's a option that's worth exploring. Because to me, that's your time, you know? That's, that's me time. When I'm driving alone in the car, when I blast my music, it's because I can. I'm not going to affect my kids. I'm going to affect my wife. I'm not affecting no one. It's my time. It's me time. Um, and I really enjoy it. So I think a lot of you guys might probably share the same sentiment as well. If you have the extra cash and you feel that, you know what, you don't want to upgrade your, the size of your wheels or you don't want to do wheel cap, change your wheel cap or something, I don't know, you, know, you should consider this. I think it's very worth it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here's one more option that I'm, I have to ask whether you pay for different paint colours. Ah. Yeah. Because you, you know, cars are available in base colours and then yes. when you want a special one, the, it can go up to 20,000 depending it's, on the it's, brand. It's actually quite crazy. I think I would actually pay more. Not 20,000 for sure. I'll probably pay like maybe two, three thousand dollars more if mm. I want that particular red uh. or, or, or racing green of sorts. Maybe I would do it, uh, but I won't pay 20 grand for a car. Mm. Yeah. I don't think anybody would actually take notice. Like, 20,000. It's a lot of money. Yeah, it really depends. You have to go and hmm. figure it out. But okay. you know, if you're going to pay $20,000 for a special color, maybe you want to go aftermarket. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, but the last option that I can think of right now that I would do is I would, if this option is available uh, on certain models, yes, uh, from leather, I will opt for fabric. Huh? That's the downgrade. That's yeah, not yeah, even yeah, an option there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would opt for fabric upholstery. Uh, there are certain cars that look better in uh, uh, fabric. Oh. Uh, like for instance, the original Golf GTI comes with tartan fabric. Uh, in Singapore, because of how we perceive cars, it's obviously leather upholstery. Um, you can actually opt for tartan seats, but you have to indent. These are indent bases. Hmm. Um, tartan seats are obviously the correct seats to have for a GDI. Oh, okay. Um, and then there are other sports cars, for instance, I think there were some Subaru uh, STIs as well, where you can opt if you want to. Uh, but I could be wrong. Maybe that is other countries. Singapore might be different. I'm not too sure about that. Mm. Yeah, so I will, I will opt for that. Because it's actually original. Oh, I would say original, sorry. It's the correct... Yeah, what it's supposed to be. Yeah, what it's supposed to be, number one. And number two, if you park under sun, it's not going to be hot, right? Yeah, it won't be yeah. as hot as a leather seat, that's for sure. you don't have to spend money on ventilated seats anymore. Uh, but you need, to, <laughs> you need to vacuum and steam yeah, wash it. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. Alright. So, so these are some of the options that you can think, that you can probably consider. If you ever buy a new car, these are some of the options that you can consider specking or including to your car. Um, just to make it a little bit better. Some are for convenience. Some are for just... Aesthetics. aesthetics yeah yeah you know like upping your size and all that stuff wheel cap blah 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 yeah these yeah. are all aesthetics but i wouldn't pay 20 grand for that paint job still yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but but the whole point of this video is to let you know that when you go buy a car is you can ask to include more things and maybe take out some things you don't have to just mm. accept the car as it is Yes. And that there is things you can add and subtract from it so there you have it that's another episode of backseat driver again we just talked about options that you should consider or not when getting a new car. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and comment in the comment box below and let us know what you would include, what we missed out and what you would exclude as well. Yes, and also follow us on TikTok. We are doing many stupid things to entertain you. <laughs> we just need to reach out to you there. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. So please follow us on TikTok and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Yep. 
Bye-bye. Do you guys want to mention a book?